Right, I think this is working. Just realised I haven't got the controller. Okay. So, oh, is this working? How would I know it's working? I don't know. Just gonna have to assume it is and hope that that is working. So no one seems to be on it at the moment, so that's fine. So I can get myself sorted. Right. Okay, have I even got this working properly? I don't know. Feels like it's working. Hello, is this working? Okay. Right, so let's revise some RE. I mean, I don't know how I meant to monitor if if people are out there or not. So we've got some signs. Uh, let's go through some key uh, topics. So I can put my key topics that side. I can keep an eye on this that side. Um, okay. I, I if you want it for the RE exam, what would it be? Okay, lots of questions suddenly. Right, we'll keep up. So. Uh, if I had one tip, it would be answer every question. Um, the most important thing... It, oh, it's snowing. Is it nighttime or daytime? Um, I can only sleep at night. The most important thing is to get marks. I know that's the most stupidly obvious answer ever. But you can't get marks on questions you leave blank. But you also can't lose marks on an RE paper. By that I mean no matter what you put... As long as some of it is right, you'll get credit for it. We employ, we're meant to employ a positive marking system, which means if you write it down and it's in any way correct, you should, you should be credited for it. That's very loud. Can I turn that down? Yes. Probably do that. That turns that down. Um, so the exam is out of 101 marks. Exam's out of 101 marks. Um, so that's... Um, uh, so you've got four sections, Christian beliefs, Christian practices, Christian beliefs, Christian practices, okay? And then within that, a one mark, a two mark, a four mark, a five mark, a twelve mark, okay? So one plus two, three, plus the four, seven, plus the five, twelve, plus the twelve, twenty-four marks per section, okay? So you're thinking, well, hang on a minute, twenty-four, oh, sorry, not out of 101, out of 99. I am so thick, I can't do maths. Um, so 24 plus 24 plus 24 plus 24 uh, equals uh, 80 plus the four fours, eight and 96. And then you get three bonus marks for spelling, punctuation and grammar. The bonus marks only go for the first 12 marker. Okay, so only on the 12 markers does your spelling, punctuation and grammar truly matter. This feels like it must be night time. Um, so uh, this has slightly worried me. Um, so I'm going to go inside and see if I can go to sleep. Um, yeah, I can. Um, so I'm just going to go through some some topics uh, and try and um, sort of like uh, remind people of some key things. Might go up. Them fellas are on fire, and that really upsets me. Oh, that one's in there. Have I got? I've got an axe, so I've got a little bit of protection. Oh yeah, there's a bear in there. Um, where am I going to put all my signs? Is the bear still in there? Right. Any danger? You could not attack me. You ready to leave me alone? Okay, we seem fine. Right, so, first topic. Where's my keyboard? Back here. You only get three spag marks, okay? And they're on the first 12 marker. So you get three spag... Is someone attacking me? No. You only get, th you get three spag marks on the first 12 marker. Um... So don't worry about the other 12 markers, okay? In the themes paper that you'll do later on, um, if the, on the themes paper, the best answer gets the 12 marks, but this one it will say which 12 marker has the marks on it, okay? It will say which 12 marker has the spag marks on it. It will mark it with a brackets three showing you that one gets spag. I haven't done a Buddhism, Buddhism video um, because I, I don't teach Buddhism at the school I work at. And these videos were originally created 
uh, just for my students. I know that does sound a little bit selfish, but that's what I was originally doing. It they were just for my students, and I'm quite happy for other students from other schools to join in. But um, Buddhism is something I'm teaching at the moment. In the future, I will happily try and knock one out. But it is it's by no means something that I'm teaching at the moment. So I would have to sit down and do some research and actually look at the spec a little bit more. So the first thing I want to talk about was the Trinity. Okay, I I, I have a love hate relationship with the Trinity. I think it's a very pi- a prickly little topic that can really um, uh, confuse you. Uh, yeah, this is for AQA. Um, this is for AQA. So, um, the polar bear. I haven't really named the polar bear yet. Do you have a name? Someone pointed out that the other polar bear might be this polar bear's grown-up child, and they might have grown up at that moment. I didn't know that could happen. That's interesting. We will have to reunite the polar bears. Um, I'm going to say some... Well, hang on. Let's think of the Father, the Son, and the Holy... We're doing the Trinity. So, what name would go with the Trinity? Um... I mean, Jesus seems a little bit on the nose. Um, Trinity. Maybe I'm just going to call you Trinity. Are you happy with the name Trinity? <gasps> okay, I tried to ride you, Polar Bear, and that was probably a step too far. I apologise for that. Um, where do I put my time for Trinity? Okay, so obviously Trinity is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay, now... The nature of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is that they are... Th- yeah, yeah, good. Oh, the Word. Nice. I could call him the Word. Yes. Good. Okay. I love that, Ava C., whoever you are. You are the Word. Mwah. Love you. Right. See, it's nice when we're friends, isn't it? It's love you. Right. So, the Trinity is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the three aspects of God, Okay. Now, for Christians, this was all agreed at a meeting called the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed was when Christianity uh, really um, sort of came to sort of a, a written conclusion of what it is. After um, Jesus died, Christianity spread into lots of different things because no one was organising it. And so, like, some people didn't believe in the Trinity originally. Some people reject the idea of the Trinity. And some Christians still do reject the idea of the Trinity. The majority of Christians don't, especially the Catholic Church. And for the Catholics, the the Trinity is very important. The idea that God can be three things and one things at the same time. How can he do that without it being sort of like um, a logic puzzle? Well, in the same way that like uh, I am three things and one thing at the same time. Okay, I am like a father, a son and a teacher. I'm not any of those things separately. I'm all of those things together. Okay, like it's not like, oh, what have I done again? I hit the keyboard accidentally. That one? Yeah, that one. It's not like I stopped being one of them. So the roles. Okay. This isn't technically how an RE teacher would necessarily teach it. But I think there is an easy. Oh, I put another sign there again. I think there's an easy way of doing this, okay? And that is to think of them as omnipotent, omnipotent, omnibenevolent, okay? And omnipresent, okay? Three of the great omni words that we can use, okay? So, how does that work? Are those signs the same height? Or is that one? No, they are the same height. So, how does that work? Well, the Father can be seen as omnipotent, okay? And we should be good at the omni words. We should be good at the onwards. So the Father can be seen as omnipotent because uh, he is uh, all-powerful. He created the world. That is the first thing. If I was stuck on a 12 marker or stuck on a 4 or 5 marker about the Father, I would focus on him creating the world. Okay, He's omnipotent. He's also the one who is going to uh, judge whether we go to heaven or hell. So he's the judge as well and just. But he's omnipotent because he created the world. It's through his power the world was created. Okay, Why do we think that with the word Father? Well, fathers create things. Now, we're not going into the biases and sexisms of historical religion, which there are many. But, you know, a father is involved in the creation of a child, as his mother. I'm not stupid. But that is, uh, you know, a nice way of remembering it. Okay, Father omnipotent, son omnibenevolent. Why is that? Uh, the, the son is Jesus on earth in human form. Sorry, God on earth in human form is Jesus. Don't forget, the son is meant to be 100% God and 100% uh, divine God at the same time. Once again you could call that a logical like problem how can one be 100% of two different things at the same time but that is what you know religion teaches mm, yeah i can do that Ava. yeah do that i'll do creation next absolutely fine um that is absolutely fine um i'll do liberalist versus and anyone else can just throw in questions i'll try and deliver them as i go through so we'll put a question here for Ava in a second 
uh, liberal uh, liberal Christians uh, versus um, and now I would always call them fundamentalists uh, fundamentalists but you can call them uh, creationists um, whatever you like to call them but they're the same sort of idea or we'll do that next okay so the son is all loving because jesus forgave jesus treated people with love jesus taught people uh, to love thy neighbor that is a quote from jesus so you can be like oh the father is most important because he's omnipotent he created the world the son is most important because he's omnipotent he forgives us it is his death that opens up the kingdom of heaven again he is crucified his death is the thing that drops the curtain in the temple an important moment in the story of the crucifixion as jesus dies the moment he dies the sky darkens like when it becomes night time in this game i need to find a way oh yeah i've got a door i can get out of the door now the bear's chill Did i do something is there any way to get you a... if i dug no focus oh i have got the lead in there still um focus um he's only been over he as he dies the sky darkens um and uh the weather changes and at this point in the temple it just says in the temple it's, it's meant to be like the nearby temple uh, the curtain falls now that's meant to be a metaphor for the separation between the the people who are in the church being separated from the people who are um in the temple sorry in the synagogue the the torah would have been kept at the back of the synagogue the people would have sat in the front so when this curtain falls between them it's the idea that people could access the torah directly in the same way that human beings could access god directly okay holy spirit i would always link to being omnipresent okay why is that because the holy spirit is present in the world now okay why is that important because when the holy spirit interacts with us the Holy Spirit is here and in person. Um, when miracles occur, the Holy Spirit is there. When people feel the love of God, that is the Holy Spirit. So you can say the Holy Spirit is important because it's all around us. So if I was doing a 12-mark question and they asked which one is the most important part of the Trinity, I would make sure to basically compare these words as well, okay? I'll throw these words in there. Um, sorry to interrupt, but what is your favourite Year 7 form that you teach? Right, this is an interesting one. I think this is a leading question. I think this is someone from one of those forms trying to make me say their class. Uh, and I think it's someone from a class I taught on Friday. I am suspicious. So I'm not going to announce my favourite form. Okay, so Ava uh, has asked uh, liberal versus uh, fundamentalist Christians, okay? Which is a, a really interesting question. Liberal versus fundamentalist Christians is really going to come up when we talk about uh, creation in Genesis, okay? So the creation story, I need to get some more signs eventually, okay? Creation in Genesis, okay, is um, the story's about... Sorry, I got something in my teeth, very annoying. There you go, I got it. Uh, creation in Genesis is how the, the world was created and how human beings were created, okay? And liberals and fundamentalists think of this in very different ways. Um, in this sense, liberal is the more traditional meaning of liberal, nothing to do with liberal politics, though, weirdly, it has come around that these things have sort of similarities in that liberals in america are more likely to be a liberal christian and a fundamentalist more likely to be a right-wing christian but that's not worth writing about now but is true and is is sort of fascinating as we sort of think about it um oh i'm i'm very low down is that better i don't know i suddenly realized oh no i can just turn the camera i was gonna sit up is that better uh right anyway so a liberal Christian will believe that um, the Bible can be mistaken, can be uh, imperfect in some ways. What do I mean by that? Well, that the Bible has uh, got potential uh, changes in it as people have uh, changed it and it's been passed on over the years. That maybe it started as the oral tradition spread by word of mouth. That maybe it has not always been um, 100% uh, factually uh accurate or maybe that it wasn't meant to be a book of facts at all that originally it was meant to be a book of um i need to work out a way oh yeah i can make another step here uh make another step here i just realized it's getting dark and i need to go back to my house maybe the bible was never meant to be a book of facts but actually was originally meant to be a um uh, a book of um i fell in um a book of stories that we're meant to learn from. So, uh, Curti has asked, do you have a quote? Uh, for, for liberal Christians, it, do you mean specifically, or do you mean for the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Not sure what you mean, for which one. Um, because for liberal Christians, you'd be using a quote about the creation of the world, and I think I have those on the outside of the, the temple. Um, so, out. Crucifixion, where did I put creation quotes? Probably more down this end. 
Uh, so I'd be throwing in... I'm sure I wrote them all down here. Um, yeah, uh, you could do God created man in his own image as a quote for creation. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Uh, oh, I knew the goblins would turn up and attack me. And this is... Why am I doing it in this stupid format? <sighs> I make such terrible life decisions. I really can't explain... I can explain why. But you're going to, you know... I'll just talk to my therapist. Um, right, going to sleep. Um... So I take any of the, the classic uh, creation quotes. I don't think there's a quote that would back up liberal Christianity particularly because you'd have to be having a quote that suggests that the Bible isn't to be 100% trusted for some reason or the Bible doesn't speak 100% in fact. And, and that would almost be... Oh, there's a very big hole there, isn't there? Did that is that where that goblin fell down? He fell down the big hole. Can I pick that one up? No. Um, so... Um, Sorry, my brain just wigged out for a second there. So I don't think there would be a quote that, that sort of backs up um, the idea of uh, liberal Christianity that I can think of at the top of my head. Um, I mean, that, that is an interesting question. Is there a quote that would promote liberal Christianity? A quote that suggests that the Bible uh, isn't the be-all and end-all? Not that it's flashing into my brain straight away. Our evangelists... Are we still chill? Yeah. Are evangelists, old earth creationists and new earth creationists also in this topic? Um, I mean, evangelism is definitely in this topic. So for people who aren't sure what Ava's talking about, if they are reading that, um, an evangelist is someone who goes around and spreads the faith. Uh, old earth creationists and new earth creationists, they won't ask specifically about. I think you might be thinking of um, theme C for the themes exam. I think that might be where that is. Let me just check what's on theme C on that paper because I think... Oh. Sorry, that is my neighbour knocking on my door. Sorry, Amazon had left a load of packages on my neighbour's drive. Uh, so, theme C, A, Q, A, R, E. I think you're, you're to, these have got a revelation, maybe that's going to be in there. Amber Kirk's talking about dinosaurs. Well, I don't know what that means. So all, I couldn't believe the other one. Right, so yes, uh, Ava, you're right. So I'm just going to check about your uh, nature of the general revelation, philosophical gods, nature of the divine. Um, a, Q, A, old earth creationists I mean I'm yeah uh, I mean no uh, old earth creationism you don't need to mention on this exam and it's not going to come as a direct question I mean it's a fascinating sort of topic but you're going really in depth what specification are you doing uh, this is AQA um, like uh, this is for the exam that's on Monday which is going to be for my students who this video is technically for but I'm happy for anyone else to join in uh, for Christianity and Islam which I'm going to go through okay um, as quick as I can um, so uh, so uh, what are the questions in here sorry I got distracted um, do liberal Christians believe the earth was created in seven periods of time it's supposed seven days they can do liberal Christians believe a whole range of ideas because they are liberal in their beliefs that means they are free with their beliefs they, they aren't restrained by um, what the Bible says insofar as they're probably going to take it that God created the world but how they believe God created the world might be different from Christian to Christian so that may be that they believe um, that it was created in seven periods of time and that the seven days of creation equals seven periods of time that is a very common belief but some might absolutely reject the whole story and go look that story is a metaphor and that metaphor isn't about anything about how it was created that has to show about God's importance and God's love for each area of creation and why God did these things so for liberal Christians, there are many interpretations that could happen. But you're right. One of the common ones is we shouldn't read the word day in the Bible to mean actually a literal day. And we should take day to mean any period of time. And we can believe that God created the world over seven periods of time. Um, so old earth creationists and new earth creationists and evangelists will do evangelism at some point. Or I will get to evangelism. That's fascinating. But creationists and fundamentalists are people who believe in this story literally. By literally, I mean that they think the story of Genesis. OK, and I've written Genesis on the outside of the church as well, but we'll put it in here as well. Oh, my keyboard is over there now. Dog, you're very annoying, aren't you? I mean, this is the second video that you've decided that you're going to ruin. Um, 
So, you, what are you doing? Dog, come here. Rosa, come here. Stop getting under the sofa. No? Okay. Sorry, the dog is trying to get on the sofa. Right. Come here, look. Ah. Oh, my lord, dog. What happened there? Right. So that sign now says Genesis. Oh, now I've done that thing where I put a sign on the air again. Right. Okay, so um, I'm losing my mind. Uh, Genesis is obviously what the Christians believe 100% in. If they're a, f a fundamentalist or they might be a creationist. Creationists and fundamentalists uh, are linked. Oh, Amber, I've just realised why you've done a dinosaur thing. Yes, a liberal Christian could explain dinosaurs by being like, oh, the dinosaurs prove that like uh, this story isn't meant to be factually accurate. Uh, whereas uh, a, f a Christian fundamentalist might be like, Oh, the dinosaurs were placed there by Satan to trick us. Or there might be, oh, the dinosaurs actually did live in the Bible and they were around at the time, but they died in Noah's flood. Or there might be, oh, dinosaurs were great bayer moths, but they died out over years. Once again, within creationism, there are actually many different beliefs. Like, Ava, you've got old earth creationists, new earth creationists. I'm not going to teach that to anyone today, what the difference between old earth and new earth creationists is, because actually, it's I don't think it's going to be that necessary. The The most deep they'll get on this as a question might be a 12 mark question that would read something like um uh the bible uh shows all christians christians need to know about creation am i going to fit it in yes and you would argue look if the bible shows all christians need to know about creation you would argue yes the bible does show all you need to know about creation but on the other hand like, oh, you can have other information like science because a liberal Christian can also bring in scientific ideas because they don't need the Bible to be completely factually accurate, okay? So I, I hope that's enough about that sort of topic. I'm going to try and whiz through as many different things as I can, okay? Oh, uh, there we go. So, uh, right. Uh, let's get on to some Islam, actually. We'll do Islam on the other wall. I'll try and switch between the two topics. And, and well, actually, Or do we do Christianity? Because I know more people are doing Christianity. We'll stick with Christianity, actually. We'll stick with Christianity. Because we know everyone has to do some form of Christianity on this exam. So, uh, on this side over here, we'll talk about... The, the exam board are definitely going to ask you about Jesus' life. And the three sections they are going to ask you, or can ask you about, is crucifixion. I put that one too high. Resurrection. And ascension. Okay. So annoyed. I've got to make that one higher with the rest of them. I'm sorry. It just doesn't look right. Okay. Uh, what was it? Crucifixion. Okay. So, crucifixion, resurrection, ascension. Okay. These are the three areas of Christianity that they can definitely, definitely ask you about. Um, why is that important? Okay. Well, that's important for no reasons. One, they've taken out a topic. Okay. That topic is the incarnation. Okay. Now, that's just for this year they've taken it out. If you're in year 10 or 9 or anyone else and coming to UGCC, you will still have to know about the incarnation. And just because you already know about the incarnation, it doesn't like hinder you because there might be a 12 mark question where you can still drop in knowledge about the incarnation or they might even ask uh, a 12 mark uh, sorry a four or five mark question where the incarnation could be useful knowledge but what they have said they will not do is ask a question directly about the incarnation so i'm going to take out the incarnation because we don't need it for today okay so what is the crucifixion the crucifixion is jesus's death okay now they might ask you two christian teachings about the crucifixion that can be very simple things, okay? So it's Christian teachings about the crucifixion can be that uh, his death uh, opened heaven, okay? Now, you're not just going to phrase it like that. I hope you're not, okay? This is reconciliation, okay? Why have I written that word in there? Because reconciliation can come up as a separate question. I'm going to put a step down so I can... Why did that go on the floor? Yep. What's happening? I don't want to do the boxes that are. So... When Jesus dies, his death opens up heaven, okay? This is an important idea for Christians. I talked about it when I talked about the um, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit over there. His death opens up heaven, okay? This is one of the reasons why he is so um, 
so uh, yeah I, and Ava, i will i do an influence for this one as well that's a very good idea so i will do that that's absolutely fine um his death opens up heaven okay reconciliation so the question hi sir what themes uh, is it we do on the second paper avde because exam money is just Christian. Uh, yeah. So whoever you are, Zodiac, um, we at our school we are doing A, B, D, E. Okay. Um, which are many ways of rem remembering. I'm not going to say any of my ways on the internet because many of my ways were horrible and involved the word die as the D. Uh, so um, a big dog eats. Um, all butter does everything. I don't know what that means. A, B, D, E. Okay. Or, or I think Miss Hamill always remembers it as every. Uh, Everybody does A, which is annoying because it's not in the correct order, but it does give you the letters. Um, so, his death opens up heaven that reconciles our relationship between uh, God and mankind. God had fallen out with us because of uh, the fall of man. The fall of man is when Adam and Eve sin in the Garden of Eden. So, how can we make up that uh, relationship? Well, Jesus died to reconcile it. Then, Ava's got a really good point. Ava says had his influence because sometimes the question says uh, explain two ways that the crucifixion might influence Christians. Okay, well you would then go okay the the uh, the crucifixion of Christians uh, to reconcile with each other. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, so I fell off my block. Can I just stay in here? I don't think the goblins will get me in here. I've only got one more sign. Hmm, have I got any more wood on me? Not enough to make more signs. Can I make... Ah, what if I make sticks? Can I then make signs? No, I think I need to go back to my little house. Anyway, we'll stay in here for now. And uh, we'll try and run home later and have a sleep. So, um, once again, this is the stupidest... I could have just opened a Word document. Um, so, this is how the influences them. So, you've got... The question comes up on crucifixion, okay? If it says explain two beliefs, okay? Well, one of his beliefs is that his death opened heaven, okay? If it says two influences, that influences us to reconcile with each other, okay? Can you see how you would do that? So, um, can I take down any of my old signs and use them again? Yes, I think I probably can. Let's take down Genesis. So, pew, nice. This is the work of a teacher who is not great, but, you know, is coping. Okay, so, what's another thing that happens, you know, another belief about the crucifixion? Uh, Jesus forgave uh, those... Ow. I mean, that is ridiculous. I'm going to hide in here slightly because so firing arrows at me. Um, that is just so frustrating. So, Jesus forgave those who were uh, crucifying him. Okay? So, that's a belief about the crucifixion. Okay? So, the question says, what's a belief about the crucifixion? You say, oh, Jesus forgave those who are crucifying him. But then Ava is asked, very sensibly, how do you use that as an influence? This influences Christians to forgive each other. Okay, so you've tr if the question does say influences, it's normally quite easy to work out what that would be in crucifixion. I think crucifixion is maybe the easiest of those sort of questions. Okay, in my mind it is anyway, because you've got these very simple things that the crucifixion tells you. Okay, and I mean we, we can get into that they're not truly simple because actually the the stories of Jesus are very complex. I don't, you know. The crucifixion, and I'm not talking about from an actual religious point of view, just for passing the exam. I don't care about the religion really as a whole. I mean, just for passing this exam, crucifixion is a nice topic. Jesus, his death opens up heaven. The simplest fact about it, the most important thing about crucifixion, okay? His death opens up heaven. This influences Christians to reconcile with each other. You could also say it influences Christians to, like, uh, follow the rules of the Bible because heaven is now open and they can now get into heaven if you want to go that simple, okay? Oh, Jesus forgave those who were crucifying him. Don't forget, we've got the quote outside on the wall. I would guess the quote's in that section there on the other side of the wall, but I'm not going out there because of the goblin issue that we have. Hello, the word. Always go and kiss the bear to make sure he's okay. Okay. Um, Jesus forgave those who are crucifying him. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do, or they do not know what they're doing. Don't forget, people are going to say quotes in different ways. The Bible has thousands of English translations, each of them slightly different, okay? How does this influence Christians? Well, it influences us to forgive each other. There's other things you can talk about uh, with um, crucifixion as well. Uh, Jesus does not respond to violence with violence. This teaches Christians that they should turn the other cheek, as Jesus had taught them. Uh, Jesus 
uh, forgave Dismas, who's on the cross. Don't forget when Jesus is crucified, he is crucified next to two other people, and that is uh, Gestus and Dismas, and he forgives Dismas, uh, and he says, oh, you can come to heaven. That's a sign of God's grace and God's love, so we should treat others with love, or you could say, or oh, we can pray to get into heaven because we can be forgiven. Will there be questions on, like, how does the Trinity influence Christians? And I'm in Miss Hamill sociology. Okay, Zodiac, I mean, uh, uh, that's fine. Uh, Miss Hamill sociology. I assume you're doing RE as well, because I think everyone's doing RE. Um, yeah, there could be questions about that. Um, oh, I do need more signs, and I need more wood. So, uh, right, I'm going to run back to... And I need more food, actually. I found leather from those llamas. Right, we're going to run back to the house and try and have a sleep. Uh, so we can make it daylight again. Ow, someone shot me in the back. Probably actually in the buttocks. And we won't discuss that, because that's very cruel. Um, right. Oh, I can't sleep because there's monsters in Of course. Why would I be able to do the thing that I want to do? Um, why have I made my life more difficult? How, why can I not make signs? I need more wood. <sighs> this is frustrating. So, how does each area of the Trinity influence Christians? I might just have to say this one rather than actually uh, writing it down. But I can write it down later. Oh, look, I found some chickens. Right, I can cook some chickens, eat some chickens. And then, oh, and I've got a cooked fish. Oh, excellent. I'll eat that as well. This is excellent. Oh, my life has never been better. I, my mood changes quite quickly. Um, so how does uh, belief in the Father influence Christians? Okay. Well, belief in the Father uh, is there that he's omnipotent and he will judge us and he'll forgive us. So Christians might be more willing to forgive because the Father will forgive them. We should act as the Father acts. Uh, Christians might also be more willing... Uh, Christians might... Uh, follow the rules because the father will judge them and they will judge others okay forgiven you'll be forgiven judging you'll be judged classic christian quote there about forgiveness okay um how does jesus is uh how does the trinity how does the son in the trinity influence us oh the son died for our sins uh so we should uh want to do everything we can to get into heaven because jesus made such a large sacrifice or uh, once again, as we said with the crucifixion, he forgives, so we should forgive, okay? Uh, the Holy Spirit is a hard one for how it influences them. Uh, I would say that the influence is there to accept that God is with us at all times and uh, to always gain strength from that, knowing that God is with us. That's the, quen that's the question. That's the sort of way I would go with it. I would be like, oh, uh, the Holy Spirit shows that God is with us at all times and therefore, if he is with us at all times, uh, we can trust that he is um, with us and he will help us when we have problems and issues. Right, stop shooting me. I need to go and chop down more wood. And you shooting me makes that very much more difficult. I remember seeing some trees. Because I need more wood to make more signs. Okay, if people... Ow. If people have questions about any other topics, I will go into them. Otherwise, I'm just going to pick topics that I want to do. Uh, because um, that's... Oh, another one you. Well, I have leads now, so I'm not going to kill you, mate. So you had a very lucky escape, though. I don't know why you just stood in a hole. Sheep, I'm going to try and avoid killing you as well. Yes, I knew there were trees up here. Excellent. Oh, there's little trees as well. No, oh, I don't get anything for a little tree. Right, well, that's rubbish. Right, so. Trees, trees, trees. Uh, and then I can make more signs, and with more signs, I can teach more RE. And there's someone shooting me. Ow. Have you been following me all the way? Ow. You're mean. Um, right. I just realised I can't see that anymore. Um, so, uh, the resurrection, okay? The resurrection is the idea... Where do you get the idea to use Minecraft? I think it's a good idea, by the way. Um, my students are in my class uh, found RE videos boring, and so uh, they, event they originally started making me... Uh, do it on a thing called Five Nights Freddy's. Five Nights in Freddy's. Five Nights on at Freddy's. At Freddy's sounds the most likely. Yes, because one of them called it FNAFL or something like that. Um, and I hated it. I hated it with all my heart. I thought it was bullying by them because that game is too scary and it made me scared. And then they, I said they had to pick something that was less scary. And so they suggested Minecraft would scare me less. Uh, because I'm easily scared. I'm eating a whole chicken. I just ate a whole chicken. Can I go to sleep? Oh my god, there are not monsters nearby. Right, anyway, need to make some signs. And that's why I started doing it. I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, just, not just in the game, but just in general, in life, I suppose, would be an accurate statement. Uh, but we just carry on making things and trying to revise for RE. Right. Ow. 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 That was silly. Why did I come out of my house? Right, right. Let's get back in there and teach the resurrection. Right. I mean, I'm, there's 
no other teacher who makes such poor decisions, I'm sure. Every other teacher is probably just sitting in their houses, actually revising properly, or just not doing risen sessions at this. Um, hello, Louis. Oh, how do I miss you? So, resurrection, okay? So, resurrection is when Jesus uh, comes back from the dead, okay? Look, he, ha uh, he is not here, he is risen. That's the easiest quote for that one. He is not here, he is risen, as he is risen from the dead. So he dies during his crucifixion. His death opens the door to reconciliation. This, rec this influences Christians to reconcile with each other, okay? Resurrection, okay? Well, what's one teaching about the resurrection, okay? Uh, Jesus uh, rose uh, from the dead uh, after... Uh, well, uh, rose from the dead... Uh, I mean, Jesus rose from the dead as a miracle. Let's let's give them another key term. Let's go for that. Okay, Jesus rose from the dead as a miracle. Okay, it's a miracle. He rose from the dead. There was no medical marvel. It was a miracle by God. Okay, uh, how does this influence Christians? Okay, it uh, proves to them that God exists. Okay, as uh, that sorry, that the afterlife exists. Okay. Um, you could build a kabar if it's allowed. It's an interesting one. I don't know if there'd be anything directly stopping me building a kabar, um, but I probably wouldn't just in case. Um, I would um, building a mosque would be absolutely fine, and at some point I might try and build a mosque. Um, uh, the the only thing with the kabar is you'd have to do the cover, and the cover does have quite a lot of Arabic writing on it, and you would then be writing the word Allah a lot and. I think some people might get upset because you'd have to sort of be destroying it as you're doing it. It could get destroyed. So it's probably best not to do it. Um, it's probably one I'd avoid, but uh, it's it's. I don't think there's anything directly saying you cannot build the Kabar in things. Um, it's just in this, it might involve me destroying it repeatedly when I get it wrong. I think just a mosque would be generally safer. Uh, it's just a domed roof. I would have no idea how to do a domed roof, okay? So... If the question came up for a four mark or five mark about the resurrection, uh, and it said, oh, explain a Christian teaching about the resurrection. Let's eat a whole nother chicken. Imagine eating that many chickens. It would be a wonderful day. There's a place in Sheffield that does a whole deep fried chicken that I, I really want to eat, but my wife doesn't want, and I'm desperate to try it. Um, so I do want an entire deep fried chicken. Um, so resurrection uh, we name one uh, christian teaching about the resurrection that jesus rose from the dead and it was a miracle uh how does that uh, influence christians well it proves them that the afterlife exists and that they should aim to get into it okay there's no proof before that that the afterlife exists what do i mean by that well jesus has said all this stuff to his followers he said all these um this information to them fly but actually he hasn't um he hasn't proved it, okay? And the fact that he dies and comes back from the dead is the proof that it does exist, that this stuff does work, okay? Because he has told them, uh, like, believe in me and, and you will have eternal life and God will give you eternal life. And then how does he prove it? Well, he dies and comes back. If I land, oh, that didn't hurt land the water. And if we look for a quote about the resurrection, where is it, crucifixion, uh, resurrection, okay? Uh, he is not here, he is risen. Where was I in the resurrection? There it is. I am the resurrection and the life. He tells, he tells his followers, I am the resurrection. That's me. Uh, the one who believes in me shall not die but have eternal life. Well, it's all right to go around saying that, but I can go around telling people, believe in me and you will live forever. Okay, it's not true. Um, I just have the beard and the haircut. I don't actually have the power of Jesus. Oh, my other bear went away. Oh, sorry, other bear. Did you did you go down into the cave? No, that's not a bear. That's one of those horrible men. Oh, my Lord. Oh, I need to dig myself out. Oh, sorry, other bear. I worry other bear's dead. Oh, luckily, we're not doing the animal cruelty section. Um, okay, our questions from past papers like to come up this year. Bilal, I think that's a really good question. I don't think anyone will come off of the 2019 paper. Um, I, I say that for a few reasons. Uh, one, um, they know how many schools use that for a mock exam. Um, and, and I think a spruce sapling. Can I put that down there? No. I wonder what I can do with that. Drop. Pew. That was fun. Um, so I don't think the 2019 paper will come up. Um, could they come up in previous years? I guess they could. What the exam board would normally do if they are going to reuse a question is they would normally reword it in such a way. Oh, my camera's all got pointed up again. Oh, because when I got up, when I panicked, when the neighbour turned up, that was it. Um, 
if the example are going to reuse them, they would probably just rephrase them in a certain way. And once it could come up for a four mark or a five mark, they'll ask about something very similar. But I, I suspect they'll just phrase it in a slightly different way, so it's not exactly the same. So in previous years, they might have said like, "Oh, for four marks, oh, I'll explain to uh, Christian teachings about the ascension," and they might just change ascension to resurrection, or they might change uh, two teachings to two influences. So even though the question is similar, it's different. So a class probably haven't planned directly for that question. Okay. And I'm going to try and come on tomorrow. Uh, well, I did some uh, past paper questions yesterday. Where did I do? Oh, yeah, they're in a book that I wrote that's in the... There's a video I put on yesterday of me practicing some past paper questions. Uh, I don't know why I'm going to leave the thing because it doesn't actually help you. Ow. That's one of the reasons I keep getting hurt. It's because I keep falling out of the thing. Okay. Um, I think uh, resurrection. Uh, other teachings about the resurrection. Okay. Um, he... Uh, he proved uh, that he was real to his disciples okay um, how did he prove that he was real to his disciples uh, uh, sir are you a pro gamer uh, no just some man just a, a desperately confused re teacher trying to help his students revise um, you know I mean what what um, desperately confused uh, so resurrection so I, I'm gonna take away the ascension sign actually for now and I'm gonna take away that one okay so resurrection what does the resurrection do uh, another teaching about it uh, he proved he was real uh, to his disciples okay um, how does that um, influence Christians? Actually, I probably wouldn't say that's the best one from Christian for the resurrection because I, I, I focus it proves that the afterlife exists, uh, the resurrection. But if you want to it proves it was real, okay, uh, it shows it influences Christians uh, that they can truly uh, believe in the story of Jesus. I mean, I, I would question that massively, okay. Uh, what keyboard am I using? I bought myself a new keyboard. I was very proud of myself. It's a wireless one, but it's a mechanical one. Uh, and it was my biggest treat for myself. I was very pleased with it. And it makes clickety clackety noises. So it sounds like I'm typing on a typewriter. I saw a picture of a disciple conga the other day. You mean like the disciples in a conga line? I mean, someone could do that as a bit of art, I'm sure. That's that's not impossible by any stretch of the imagination. Um, yeah, I don't know what the name of the keyboard is. It's Logitech. Did it say on the back? G613 don't know if that helps that might just be like a security code but that's the number it says on the back um i like it it was a present to myself for being a very good person and not crying when i went to the dentist uh ascension that's not true i always cry at the dentist not at the pain just at the concept that their job is looking in people's mouths i weep for the existence they have to have i feel sorry for dentists it's also not true they get a lot of money uh so the ascension uh, what's a Christian teaching about the Ascension? Uh, that 40 ah, not says, 40 days after he rose, after 40 days, uh, there's not going to have space, after 40 days uh, he rose to heaven. Now after 40 days, I mean the 40 days after the resurrection. SS, you are a legend. No, just a... Uh, uh, a, a RE teacher. Oh, uh, Bilal, I can do a structure for answering a 12 mark question. Uh, give me a second. I did that on a video I did yesterday. Um, if you watch one of my thing, I did one yesterday last night where I wrote 12 mark questions out. But I will, I will try and do a 12 mark question structure for you again today. Uh, intro for and again. Yeah, that, Ava, that is the structure I would go for. But I'll explain it in a bit more uh, detail, uh, Bilal, if that's useful for you. Uh, that he rose 40 days to heaven. Okay, how does this influence Christians? Okay, it shows that uh, Jesus is truly God on earth and should be treated as such. I'm not going to treat it. As such. I've run out of space, okay? What does that mean? Well, it means they can believe in the Trinity and, and they can treat Jesus as God on earth, 100% um, human and 100% divine, because he is going to go in, into heaven, okay? Uh, I'm just going to have to go and make some more signs below, because a perfect 12 mark question, so that means I need more wood, a perfect 12 mark question for me has five paragraphs. You can get 12 marks in less paragraphs, okay? This is how I would design my perfect question, okay? That's not just me as um, pretending I'm mark uh, sorry, writing a, a, an answer. Like, obviously, when I'm writing an answer, 
in the occasions when I do, like last night when I did them on the internet, I wrote answers out, and that's how I did it in five paragraphs. But also, that's me thinking, as, uh, oh, not much tree here today. Um, so that's enough wood. I can go and make some more signs. That's me thinking as a marker. Now, why do I say that? Um, I, I don't want to in, in, impugn uh, the marking systems that uh, all teachers use, um, but uh, what I would... Oh, hang on. Uh, my school teaches us to do two big paragraphs, four and against, and the evaluation. Yeah, and that's a perfectly good um, technique, uh, Mr. Maths. Um, I'm not going to say your first name because it's going to make me say a word that sounds a bit too much like a rude word, and I don't want to have one of my students, especially um, a certain Jacob, who I teach, uh, clipping... Uh, that clip and making it sound like I'm saying a swear word because that's what Jacob would do. I don't trust him. Uh, and Jacob, you know I don't trust you because that's exactly what you would do in that situation. Uh, if you're watching, if you're not, good, but you'll probably watch it later because you're a scally way. Uh, make some more sticks, make some more signs. There we go. Okay, so when the examiners are marking these papers, they are doing it, uh, they are doing it quickly. And for me, the, the two paragraph technique that you're talking about, Mr. Maths, um, it could lead an examiner who's marking it quickly to think that you haven't made enough points and it might um, stop them seeing the answer. There's also another strange point. Paragraphs are important for getting your spag grade. I know it's ridiculous, but seeing an answer in paragraphs is often enough to get you an extra spag mark, which is ridiculous, but it often is. They'll often give two spag marks just for seeing an answer written in paragraphs. So I, I personally would go for um, five paragraphs, but uh, wrong spelling of Jacob, J A. K U B, but I should probably. It doesn't matter. Uh, he knows what he's up to. Uh, oh, there's the bear. Oh, there's the bear with its baby. Maybe you escaped from the hole somehow. I'm so pleased you're free. Hello, bear. Oh no, you're not pleased to see me. Well, okay, that is reasonable because I did trap you in a hole. Maybe I should free you. I feel bad that you're just stuck in here. Go on, be free. You can go. If you choose not to, that's fine. So. Personally, I wouldn't go for uh, for an intro paragraph, okay? I wouldn't go for an intro paragraph either because I, th I think an intro paragraph, you might just be... Uh, uh, I mean, I don't want to say wasting your time, but I, I want to go quicker than that. Um, I would be going for, against, for, against, and then conclusion. Actually, I'm going to call it my opinion. Opinion. So, ah, the angry bear's out there. Is that your husband or wife and you've got a difficult relationship with them? Look at them. You can stay here. It's fine. You're safe here. Yeah. I'll tell them to go. Ow. That didn't work. So, uh, Two points for the statements and two points against. Yeah, that's personally what I'd go for. I, I would be, um, I'd be going for a four argument, an agree argument, saying four. Uh, so let's say it's a question about this, uh, the life of Jesus, okay? And you had like uh, the resurrection is the most important part of Jesus's life story, okay? Uh, Jesus' part, the resurrection, the most important part of Jesus's life. Then I would be like, right, four. Some Christians would agree with this because, okay, what, what, ridiculous. How did you get through a door? Just to punch me. Now I've got to eat a chicken, just to make myself feel better. <sighs> trying to revise our eating and you're getting punched by a polar bear. So, um, the resurrection is the most important part of Jesus' life. Some Christians would agree with this because I wouldn't do an introduction, state your opinion in the intro and argue it throughout responding to other beliefs. Is it true? There's nothing that you have to do, Ava, in, an, in, a, in a question. That is a very good way of doing it. Uh, and that's a perfectly fine way of doing it. And especially if you're going for full 12 marks, it can be a very sensible manoeuvre to put in your introduction uh, a, a a line saying what your argument's going to be. I'm going to be arguing that the resurrection is most important. However, it's not necessary. You can get 12 marks, and the exam board regularly release 12 mark questions which don't follow that structure. 
Okay, uh, but they'll show different structures it can. So, uh, Mr. Maths, who who's um, got the who spoke earlier, says they do two big paragraphs. We marked ones this year. The exam board sent us answers this year. There were two big paragraphs and a conclusion. Twelve marks. And there's ones like you're suggesting, five uh, an introduction, five paragraphs, twelve marks. And there's my tactic, which is twelve marks. Uh, Bilal, how long? So, the exam is a hundred and five minutes. And there's 99 marks. So roughly, you would be spending one mark per minute on these things, okay? So if you're on a 12-mark question, roughly you have 12 minutes. However, you are not going to take a... F hopefully, you're not going to take a full minute on your one-mark question. You're not going to take a full two minutes on your two-mark question. What does this mean, Okay. Oh, hello, Jacob. Oh, yes, Jacob, right. Jacob, please don't clip little bits of this video and make it embarrassing for me. I have enough problems already. Um, so normally by the time you've got to the 12 marker, if you're going well in the exam, you probably have 15 minutes for this 12 marker. I would not want to be spending more than 15 minutes on it ideally. And that's roughly, if you're doing five paragraphs, three minutes per paragraph. So four against for against conclusion. But I call this the far well we call this the far the far farm technique, okay? For against make sure you've got a religious quote in one of those. For against where's my religious quote? Conclusion or my opinion, okay? On. I don't know what it means, Jacob. Um <laughs> Sorry. I've been talking too much. I'm just going to have some diet coke because that's the only way that I can cope with anything. Yes, I know I drink it like a little old lady, I've been told. So, oh, lovely stuff. Um, so that's how, Bilal, I would uh, I would set it out, okay? Four against, four against. Yeah, 15 minutes, I think, is... I forgot there was an angry bear in here. I literally forgot that the whole reason I stood on the wall was the angry bear. I really feel that that was deserved. Like, normally I feel a little... And there's another bear out here. How are there so many bears? Bears have taken over my church. Okay, you win. You get the church. Fine. Where's the sun gone? Sun's there. It's not night time. Let's just climb out here. Ow. Every time I fall off the wall. I'll do my work on the outside of the church. Fine. Absolutely fine. Um, so, uh, what other topics that I want to go over? Okay, we did uh, Resurrection, Ascension and that. Uh, we have done quotes. Yeah, I've got quotes all around it. Um, if there are any quotes, I mean, there's a whole video on quotes on there. I have old videos on quotes as well on the channel. Uh, the only issue with the old videos on quotes is they were for a different... They weren't for this year's exam. By that, I mean some of them might not be that useful as there's no guarantee uh, they, they're they going to come up. Um, I haven't actually... I just realised I haven't got any quotes about forgiveness on here. Uh, really, I mean, I've got from the crucifixion... Um, Where's that? Where's the crucifixion? Uh, forgive them, Father, know not what they're doing. Uh, but And when he forgives Dismas. But uh, don't forget always, uh, forgive uh, 7 times 70. Not 79, 70. Uh, which is how many times we're meant to forgive. Uh, that's a nice one. Uh, and uh, my favourite easy quote, which is, Forgive and you will be forgiven. Uh, are you guys going to watch Eurovision later? Yes, of course. I've got little scorecards, and me and my wife score the songs under five categories of performance, uh, lyrics, uh, musical performance. There's something else we have as well. Oh, theatrics, and we make little scorecards, and we have a lovely time. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. I mean to say, hold on, I'll start screen recording. Turn slow chat off right now. I don't know what slow chat is, Jacob. Um, I haven't turned it on, I press the stream button and I just carry on living my life. Um, would you need specific quotes for Easter and Christmas? Maybe. And I've tried to put some down. Um, so, I, I talked about this the other night. And Easter and Christmas is horrible, horrible to find quotes for. Um, for Easter, I would try and bring in anything uh, about... Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, where is it? Uh, Easter, you can do anything about resurrection uh, and evang uh, evangelism. Uh, anything about resurrection, okay? So you can talk about that uh, and crucifixion, okay? So you can say, oh, these are all the reasons uh, why they're celebrating Easter. So I pick those ones. Christmas, it's not like there's a bit in the Bible where it says, um, 
and lo and behold, did they bring presents, okay? But you could say uh, for Christmas, um, I mean, simply uh, the, wor the word became flesh and dwelt. Why am I going for the old one? And lived uh, amongst us. And I believe Among Us is a game, but it's technically Amongst Us. But I don't think you'd get penalised for Among Us. It lets us comment once a minute. Oh, Jacob, if I knew how I turn that on, I would turn it off. I haven't pressed any buttons, so I don't know what that is. You know I'm stupid. I've literally taught you for years. I'm an idiot. Uh, uh, Cuba, don't be rude to people, but don't worry. I've dealt with uh, Jacob for many years. He is, unfortunately, as annoying as he is, one of my favourite students. Uh, partly because of that, okay? So the word became flesh and uh, lived among us. Have you baptised the villagers? I tried to baptise the villagers, um, but uh, I, I ended up... The problem with baptising the villagers was... Oh, okay, right. I'm going to open the doors to this, and hopefully the bears will just come out on their own. That's the plan. Um, I tried to baptise the villagers, but when you throw water on the floor, it washes away the snow, and then they can't get into their house. I've got Christ is risen from the dead, trampling death by death for Easter. And Father, you make this holy night radiant with the splendor of Jesus Christ. Man, they're amazing quotes. The, the reason I haven't gone for those quotes is because they're very specific to Christmas and Easter. And, and if, if that question doesn't come up as a 5 or 12 marker, my, for, for my money, I, I would worry about using them because, how do I say this? There's such a narrow usage for those quotes if you can remember a lot of quotes, great. But some people struggle to remember quotes. Like, look how many quotes I'm already suggesting on here. That is a lot of quotes to learn. Like, I can remember them because it's literally my job to do it. But a lot of students, I think I would struggle to do that. So I would maybe focus on quotes that are already here about crucifixion and resurrection. Uh, sorry, about resurrection and incarnation and apply those to, to Christmas and Easter. I mean... Um, I mean, you could also, I mean, you could just say gold frank, frank incense and myrrh if it was about how it's like how Christians are influenced by it. So you go, oh, how does Christmas influence Christians? And if there's something like that, you could just mention, oh, in the Bible, it says Christians bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and this influences Christians to bring gifts. If you want to go simple, the quotes you've got are exceptional, though, okay? Uh, I don't know what any of that means, um, Cuba. If you make a cauldron, you can put water in and baptise them that way. Yes, I, I could do that. That's not a bad plan. Uh, I have looked at the cauldron and I have uh, got plans to make one. I did find some more metal when I went on my adventure to kill a squid, which I didn't film. It was just a private squid killing situation. Uh, who's my favourite student? You are Jacob, you Louis. Um, I've spent the last three years feeding you. Um, that was not an accident, okay? Um, that has occurred. Uh, and now I've just heard my son come in, so I will have to go and be a father again in a second. And that's absolutely fine because that is an important role that I have. So before I go, does anyone have any final RE questions? Because that is the most important role. I will try and make another video tonight just doing keywords and just some final reminders. Um, because I can hear my son in the living room and we're going to together... Uh, attempt to, not living room, this is living room in the kitchen, we're going to uh, plant some sunflowers. Very excited. I went and bought bamboo canes. So you're in your flop era too now. I'm not having this behaviour. I'm assuming me being in my flop era is a bad thing. Um, though I've recently heard someone uh, suggest that they were going into goblin mode and so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Right, I are you the nice bear? Okay, so you're the nice bear who doesn't hit me. And you have a baby now. Well, this is fine. You two can stay here. Um, so, uh, Jacob, maybe you're a goblin mode now. I don't know what that means. I'm an old person and all the YouTube and Twitter stuff goes over my head. Okay, any more questions? Yeah, Louis, you did win. Uh, and mainly I did that because I knew it would annoy Jacob more than it would annoy you. And that's why you're my favourite, because you're more chill. Okay. No worries, uh, absolutely fine. Uh, I'll uh, I'll try and do another one tomorrow, uh, and I'll put another one on tonight. Um, so just some final tips. Tonight, all I'm going to do is pop up keywords uh, and uh, explain how I'd use them in a four or five mark question. 
Um, and maybe uh, for that, Mr. Bilal, earlier, I'll try and put some uh, more potential questions on uh, that are coming uh, on there, okay? Uh, thanks, guys. Well, not thanks. Ow. Okay. Right. I'm ending the video, for Christ's sake.